Live, live from the famous Acme Comedy Hollywood, it's Hollywood Stands Up, an evening with Kurt Zipfeld. Starring Kurt Zipfeld, Joe King, Matt Knudsen. Music by Ella Menope. And your host tonight, Darren Capozzi. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Darren Capozzi. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Nice crowd. Welcome to Hollywood Stands Up, a night with who? Yeah, you all came here. Anyone come here to see Joe King? Yeah. How about Matt Knudsen? Yeah. Keep going for LMNOP. How are they tonight, guys, huh? Pretty jamming. I am your host, Darren Capozzi. And I, I got one crazy fan. That's what's great about that. I'm just so psyched. I just got back from home from Jersey. And East Coasters here? Yeah. East Coasters? All right, let me ask you guys a question. Are you guys tired of the people who grew up in California who thinks it gets cold after it gets below 65? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You guys know how cold it gets in the East Coast? This is how cold it gets in the wintertime in the East Coast. You'll drop your house keys in the snow and be like, eh, fuck it, I'll get a new house. I'll figure this out later. <laughs> Fucking freezing. It's so cold, am I having a stroke? I, uh, the reason I went back home, I was back for my 10-year uh, uh, high school reunion. And I went to high school with a lot of Italian retards, okay? You guys have seen the Jersey Shore? Well, I went to high school with all those douchecocks, okay? But here's the one thing about Italians from New Jersey. They cannot remember any specific important date in their life unless their sports team did something that year. <laughs> I was hanging out with my one buddy at the reunion. He was hammered, and I was like, yo, Vinny, man, how'd you meet your wife, Vanessa? She's gorgeous. He's like, ah, oh, fucking shit. How'd I meet Vanessa? Uh, let's see. It was uh, game seven, uh, 2001. Yankees versus fucking Arizona. Uh, Mariano was having the fucking hottest time closing. Next thing I know, it's a bloop single over his head. Bada bing, bada bang. Arizona wins the championship. I'm at a strip club. That's where I met Vanessa. <laughs> True story. I, uh, I also went to, a lot of my high school buddies had tattoos. You guys got tattoos? Yeah. I, okay, here's the deal. I think tattoos are getting out of hand. Okay? I think people are confusing tattoos with journaling. Right? It used to be simple in the 50s. You got a heart and an anchor the fucking out the door. <laughs> now it's like Dear Diary. My own buddy was hammered. Another guy, and he's showing off his tattoos. He's like, holy shit, you see what this is over here? No, it's not a picture of my family. It's a picture of the Golden Girl, season one through five. <laughs> oh, this, this here is the word shore, because I go to fucking shore every weekend. Uh, oh, this is my grandmother. She died in the 80s. That's why it says, I ain't afraid of no ghost, bitch. <laughs> when, I was, uh, when, I was, when I was home, my mom loves that show, uh, The Voice. You guys watch the show, The Voice? It's kind of like a bastard child of American Idol. <laughs> my, I, I, it's a good show, I, but I don't understand. Like, every singer on the show was sh decided to show us the notes while they were singing, like mid-song. As one girl was like, y'all so beautiful in every single way. Words can't bring me down. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 I, uh, I, my mom also likes this show, uh, Hoarders. Yeah. The show's great, right? For those of you who don't know what it is, it's, Hoarders is a reality show about people that hoard shit for like 30 years. And, they, and what's so weird about this show is they bring in like uh, a psychologist to work with them, to work like a 12-step program with them. Shouldn't it be two steps? You pick it up and you fucking throw it out? And they call it a disease. Last time I checked, it's not a fucking disease if a hefty bag can cure it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. 
you two are in love holding hands. Like, is this is this like a new is this new relationship? Because that's new relationship holding hands shit. Because old relationship like don't fucking touch me or breathe on me. Oh. This isn't television. This is live. I can see and hear him when you're talking, sweetheart. So. Is that what you're like, that's what I do with my husband. I don't even sit next to him when we go to the movies. That fucker's down there, dude. Even during the romantic ones, I'm like, fuck you, three rows over. I know, I, you, you're, you, they're all pointing. They're all like, it's him. Could you stand up so fucking embarrass the guy so much? It's the one in the stripe, the dick over there, everybody. That's my husband. I don't touch him. Fuck that guy. <laughs> you're probably an awesome dude, right? Yeah. Oh, your friend's like, yes, your wife's like, bullshit. <laughs> but, <laughs> nah, keep it going. That's really great, dude. That's great. <laughs> Welcome back, dick. I, uh, where the fuck this guy go? It's a live show, bro. I don't want to see you. Every time I go home, I, yeah. Any questions? Every time I go home, I love to go to uh, my favorite Chinese food restaurant. Fucking love Chinese food. It doesn't matter though what state you're in, Jersey, California, whatever, it's always the same when you order takeout. They are so nice to you when they take the order, but so mean to their own. Like I walked in, I was ordering for my family, I was like, uh, hey man, can I get some chicken broccoli, some fried rice, uh, wonton soup, and um, uh, some egg rolls? He's like, oh yeah, chicken, broccoli, okay. <laughs> fried rice, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I throw some one. I throw in some crispy noodles. I like your shirt. It says thug life. <laughs> How ironic. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Let me get that one. Then you're like, oh my god, I forgot to order coke. He's gonna fucking kill her. <laughs> what do you think that guy's life is outside the Chinese food restaurant, right? Like his daily life, like he's at his kid's wiffle ball game or t-ball game. He's like, oh, okay, so uh, good to see you, Mrs. Johnson. Okay, your son, just a very good baseball player. Oh, hold on a second. Ling Wang is at the plate. Hold on, okay, hold on. Oh, I have no idea why he only won strike out a t-ball. <laughs> Stupid. I, uh, oh, I just uh, read today that uh, Jack Nicholson, he's dating this 28-year-old uh, model from Milan because she's got an old soul. <laughs> Doesn't he really mean young vagina? <laughs> like, guys, have you ever gone out to the bar and been like, oh, yo, yo, Jimmy, yeah, check, out, check out the girl at the bar. Uh, which one, the blonde? No, the other one. The big boobs. <sighs> With the old soul. <laughs> oh my god, I, I gotta get it. Yeah, this is what I do when I go to clubs. Oh, fucking yeah, I get it. <laughs> then, then I get kicked out, bro. <laughs> old soul, it's kind of gross. It's better than a young soul in an old vagina, though, right, guys? <laughs> All right. Doesn't that kind of sound like a country song? She got a young soul in all the China. Figured it out when I got behind her. Put a board to my body, won't fall inside her. Oh, she got a young soul in all the China. Bigger than both Carolinas or a whole dug out by miners. She got a young soul in all the China. Oh, she got a young soul in all the China. Oh, hey, you have. Oh, hey, you have. Oh, hey, oh, hey. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, uh, so uh, I'm celebrating four years sober. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, awful. <laughs> it's terrible. But I'm uh, recently single. Um, thank you. And uh, someone said, what did someone say? I just heard. Uh, that's what I just heard. Again, yes, I'm recently single again. Thank you. All homosexuals, please call out loud right now. I, uh, but I've been doing some online dating, okay? And the uh, first girl I met out of the gate, it was awesome. So it, since my life is coffee drinking, we decided to have a coffee date. So we, we meet up, first thing out of her mouth. She looks at me, she goes, 
Oh my god, seriously? Seriously? You're like so much skinnier than your picture. <laughs> You're like manorexic. I was like, uh, well, you got no tits. What's that make you, boobleemic? <laughs> but she was hot and I'm very shallow, so I continued the date. <laughs> so was that dude. So we're walking and talking, we pass this McDonald's. I'm like, do you want to go in there real quick? She's like, oh my God, time out. Don't tell me you go in there, that's the deal breaker. I was like, well, I think the deal breaker was was when you called me anorexic. <laughs> but no, I'm like, you know, I was hot. So I was like, no, I don't go in there. I was like, nah, it's stupid. She's like, seriously, it's so gross. Like, what's even on that menu? I'm like, I don't know, a hamburger, cheeseburger, double cheeseburger, quarter pounder, double quarter pounder with cheese, Big Mac, big and tasty, big and tasty with cheese. Fish, McChicken, McRib, Premium Chicken Class Sandwich, Grilled Crispy, Premium Chicken Club Sandwich, Grilled Crispy, Ranch Snack Wrap, Grilled Crispy, Honey Mustard Snack Wrap, Grilled Crispy, Southern Salad, Crispy Chicken Sandwich, Plain. <laughs> Happy Meal Hamburger, Happy Meal Cheeseburger, Happy Meal Four Piece Chicken McNuggets, Mighty Kids Meal Six Piece, Mighty Kids Meal Double Cheeseburger, There's French Fries, Small Meal Large, Chicken McNuggets Four Six Twenty Piece, Chicken Selects Five Three Piece, and you can get yourself some fucking Chicken McBites, Butch. Yeah. Sometimes I'm thirsty and I like to get a Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, High C, Power Ward, Dasani, OJ, Coffee, and fucking ice, you dick. Yeah, that's cool. But sometimes you get up early, you know what you can get? English muffin, sausage, big muffin, sausage, muffin, egg, biscuit, bacon, eggs, chips, hotcakes, hotcakes, sausages, scrittles, scrambled eggs, hash browns. Hash browns, dick. But I get dessert though, fruit and yogurt, parfait, kitty cone, apple dippers, chocolate chip with thick shake, vanilla chip with thick shake, strawberry chip with thick shake, McFlurry and McFlurry, cookie, apple pie, McDonald's cookies on the fucking menu. <laughs> and what? And shamrock shake for the drunks that drink it and talk it during. It's not fucking St. Patrick's Day, yo, dick. It's coming soon though, man. Fucking get hammered, we get that shit in 20 piece. Fucking shit my pants. She looked at me and she goes, oh my God, seriously? Seriously, you work there? I was like, no, nope, Burger King, Whopper, double Whopper, triple Whopper. You guys ready to start this show? You guys, are you ready to start this show? These guys, these comedians are amazing. I've seen them all perform. This first guy, he just got back from a music fest in Austin. Put your hands for their very, 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 very funny Joe King, everybody. Joe King, Joe King, Joe, Joe, Joe King. Hey guys, what a fun audience! Good looking audience. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Joe King. Um, I don't know, some of you uh, might recognize me. Some of the forty-three people that just walked in might recognize me. I was a uh, I was actually a child star. Um, I don't know how many of you watch child porn, but uh, <laughs> those of you that do might recognize me from such films as Home Alone 3, some, <laughs> Kindergarten Cock. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes people, sometimes people think that I'm gay, not gay, um, but uh, I have had a, uh, a gay experience once. Um, I drank a Zima. <laughs> no, then I, I sucked a cock. Um, <laughs> it was just to get the taste of Zima out of my mouth. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Zima time. <laughs> Guys, here is... <laughs> Here's my idea for a rapper. I think there's not enough really good rappers right now. This is my idea for a rapper, right? Just imagine the hardest black dude you could ever imagine, the fucking most gangster dude ever, tatted, tatted up, buff, do-rag, gold teeth, just a hard-looking dude, right? And then this is that, his album cover. It's just him on the cover of his album shaving his pussy. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> a 
for shaving my motherfucking pussy. <laughs> his name's B Frida. Because in all his videos, he's just riding a dick. He's just like, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> be Frida, be Frida. You know, I want to come inside ya. Be Frida. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> what happened to hip hop music, by the way? It got so pussified. Does anybody here like rap music or like rap music? I liked gangster rap music when the guys were like shooting each other and the only clothes they wore were like white t-shirts, khakis, a hat, and guns. That was the only accessory that they had was guns. <laughs> now they like dance around and shit. I like Tupac. Tupac had a, yeah, he was the, he was the best. He had a song called Hit Him Up. Do you guys know that song, Hit Him Up? Hit Him Up is the angriest song in the history of the world. It's so amazing. It's literally, this is how he starts the song off. First off, fuck your bitch and the click you claim. First of all, fuck the woman you love and fuck everyone associated with you. And then like halfway through the song, he just stops rhyming completely and just starts telling people to go fuck themselves. He's just like, fuck New York, fuck Biggie, fuck P. Diddy. And then one point he goes, Fuck bad boy as a staff, record label, and as a motherfucking crew. As a staff? Like there's literally interns like, me? What the fuck? <laughs> Tupac wants to kill me? What did I do? <laughs> Cut to 15 years later and Eminem's like, I'm not afraid to take a stand. Everybody. Take my hand. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I gotcha. How come you weren't applauding, dude? What the fuck? He was busy. So I have a question for the ladies. Can I ask you girls a question? Um, you guys know about tampons, right? You know about tampons? Everybody knows about tampons, right? Why are there commercials for tampons on the television every 30 seconds? Who the fuck are these for? Like, are there really women just sitting at home bleeding all over the couch? Like, I guess this is just how it is. Oh, they make those? Grab the keys, let's go. Drip, 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 drip. And there's always women doing karate in every one of these fucking, why are they doing karate? Like, that's what's stop, like ta bad tampons is what's stopping millions of women from taking taekwondo lessons. Finally, I don't have to bleed all over my gi. I'm a black belt, not a red belt. <laughs> By the way, if you ever took a karate lesson, you should, uh, you should ask for your money back. That's got to be the most useless shit in the world. Have you ever seen a karate fight break out ever in your life? <laughs> no one has ever seen it. It's never happened. There's never been a bar fight where two guys are like, hey, bro, you better fucking back up, man. You better back up, bro. All right, that's it, dude. Fucking you're done. There's like 20 dudes like knocked out unconscious everywhere. That'd be amazing. It'd be so amazing. You know what does work though? Uh, what I love is the uh, the ultimate fighting championship. Do you guys watch that? Anybody watch that? You know about it, right? It's the best thing. It, for those who don't know, let me explain it just kind of briefly. It's two men kicking the fuck out of each other in a cage. <laughs> there's nothing else, there's, there's like no other rules. It's just the kicking the shit out of each other. And it's amazing, it's the best thing ever. And I was watching it the other day, and uh, my girlfriend walked in. I don't really have a girlfriend. And she walked in, <laughs> and she was like, what is this? This is the gayest thing that I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. W what are you watching, dude? I was like, what are you talking about? This is Ultimate Fighting Championship. This is the straightest thing that's ever happened in the world. 
And she's like, no, dude, look at the screen. And then I kind of like looked at the screen and right at that moment, it was just two dudes in spandex covered in Vaseline for some reason, like up against a steel cage, just like. <sighs> I want to fucking kick your ass, bro. I was like, okay, maybe there's something gay about that. But why does that make it any less tough? Like, what does gay have to, what does that have to do with anything? I mean, when you really think about it, being gay is badass. You butt fuck other dudes. You can't dominate another man more than that. I'm gonna butt fuck you. I'm gonna butt fuck you. That's a serious threat. You gonna fight with a guy? You butt fuck him? That's it. You win. Fight's over. That guy's done. He's not coming back. What's he gonna do? Fucking block it and then. All right, I'm back in it. I'm gonna go tell his friends, like, dudes, guys! Dude, just butt fucked me. Let's go get him. His friends are gonna be like, fuck that. I don't wanna fight that guy. Are you kidding me? He's gonna butt fuck me now. I don't wanna fight him. Going back to uh, uh, the rap music. So, uh, I like gangster rap music, but the only place that you can see gangster rap music nowadays is uh, BET. That's the only place they play it. So I watch a little bit of BET. And I don't know, I see a lot of white people, only white people <laughs> here. <laughs> but if you've ever watched BET, the way they try to market, like they don't give the same commercials that they put on NBC, right? The companies don't. They try to like mix it up and market it for a black audience, but they do it in the most offensive way possible. <laughs> Like every slogan becomes a hip hop R&B song. It'll be like, let go of my ego, let go of my motherfucking ego, bitch. And you're like, what? Mc the McDonald's commercials on BET. If you sat down with a team of racists, you could not come up with a more stereotypical portrayal of black people than the fucking McDonald's commercials on BET. It's insane. Like they'll just have two dudes hanging out, one was like, well, shit, a motherfucker be hungry in this bitch. <laughs> shit, motherfucker, you hungry? You get your ass a McDonald's, you motherfucker, huh? Yo, you right, man. Yo, I'm going to smoke this blunt. I'm going to walk down the motherfucking McDonald's and get that motherfucker. <laughs> you get motherfucking shit, motherfucker. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. <laughs> All right, you guys have been awesome. I am Joe King. Joe King, Joe King, Joe, Joe, Joe King, Joe King, Joe. Yeah, Joe King, everybody. Joe King. Joe King is. Uh, G What's up? What's up, man? Oh, you shouting? Did Joe King scared them? Joe King is for hire for kids shows, though, guys. So um, <laughs> you have kids, fifth birthday parties, they fucking eat them up. They eat them up in bar mitzvahs, yes. <laughs> ah, Joe King, one more time. Guys, Joe King, wasn't he great? Are you guys having a good time tonight? Well, this next guy, you guys are in for a treat. Not only has he been on the Late Late Show, huh? He's been on Big Love. And this next comedian, legitimately cares about you. Everyone put your hands together for the very funny Matt Knudsen, everyone! Matt Knudsen. Matt Knudsen. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, LMNOP, everyone, huh? The eight weeks of rehearsal we did paid off. The Matt Knutson song came off flawlessly. Very good. Joe King, funny guy. <laughs> Until he starts butt fucking you. <laughs> I gotta look out for that one. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, as introduced, I, I am Matt Knutson. 
And like all of you, I hope my set is great. <laughs> it's really gonna help our time together. Mm, yeah. Hey, uh, by applause, is anyone here tonight on a last date? Hopefully, oh my goodness. Well, that's not embarrassing. Hopefully. You guys all right? You gonna make it? I see some people here, they uh, maybe got a babysitter to come out. That's very nice. Good for you. Yeah, see some people that maybe have their kid in the car with the window cracked. So glad you could make it. I'm married, uh, things are going well. Appreciate your interest. <laughs> and I'm just saying right now, if somehow you guys could all match this gentleman's enthusiasm. <laughs> You're the heroes. You're the heroes. Get that guy a beer. Have him pay for it himself. That's the kind of guy that I am. You married? Of course. <laughs> I'm just applauding the institution. <laughs> Tried it, wasn't for me, but I'm excited for you. Make it work, divorced. That's funny. Actually, uh, <laughs> me and the band, as part of our rehearsal, uh, we wrote a song about divorce. You guys remember that one? I think it was in D minor, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> it's not working out. Get your shit and bail. I'll tell the postman where to forward your mail. We are through. There's no more me and you. This shit is over. Sign the paperwork from my lawyer. Where is the love? It packed, it shit, and gone. This shit is over. Give me back my class ring. It's gonna involve a lot of paperwork But here's the thing, it's over I couldn't love you any less <laughs> L-M-N-O-P Rockin' my world uh, Things are going well, uh, thank you Got a new cell phone recently that's how good it's going. <laughs> it was time though, actually. Uh, my last cell phone was so old, it had to be carried around by a soldier. <laughs> I was getting interference from Charlie. Never got the airstrikes I called for, so. I got a droid. And I think we've all experienced this uh, at least once. Uh, I think it's happened enough where there's that term, it's a butt dial or a pocket <laughs> dial, purse dial, you know. We've all been the recipient of, of at least one butt dial voicemail. <laughs> and even though you know it's a butt dial voicemail, you still listen to the whole thing. <laughs> You never can tell when the pertinent information <laughs> could arise. I actually, uh, I recorded a, a butt dial voicemail that I received recently. See if you guys can help me figure this out. I could not for the life of me make out a word. Oh, Josh.
Dr. Barnhart from Santa Monica Based Visions, do you totally have cancer? And scene. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, things are going well, though. Thank you. <laughs> Bought a uh, lottery ticket recently and uh, haven't had time to check the numbers yet, so it's possible I'm being nice to people unnecessarily. Here's a little financial checkup that you can give to yourself. Uh, if your credit card statement has a comma in it, and your bank account does not, <laughs> maybe this isn't the year you go plasma. <laughs> Been married for a while, yeah. Long enough to figure out what the beyond section is. Bed, bath, and beyond. Turns out it's just more scented candles. <laughs> uh, we have a great in America, though. We really do. Actually, my wife is a, a first-generation American. Anyone uh, first-generation American by, by applause? Or are you really? Cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, her mother uh, immigrated to America from Hungary, and she was born here. So after I got married, I uh, had a chance to meet my new Hungarian cousins. And just as a frame of reference to let you know how good we have it, uh, the average Hungarian salary, and this is probably true for most Eastern Bloc countries, is about $200 a week. That's not a whole lot. So if you ever want to feel like a major league American asshole, just try sitting on the couch next to your Hungarian cousin when a cash for gold commercial comes on. Tired of all your unwanted gold? <laughs> Has your excessive wealth become a burden? <laughs> Can't sleep without being punctured by a scepter. <laughs> Give us a call. We're the gold guys. Remember one of those gold guys looks like a daddy from a Las Vegas brothel? <laughs> and a medallion bald. Hey, give us a go. My cousin. Of course, I met um, my English is not, not so good. Um, is un, unwanted gold? <laughs> Oh, yes, Milos, uh, here in America, um, sometimes people have too much gold. <laughs> too, too much, too much gold. We are just, it's just gold that they don't want anymore. Because of curse? Not because of a curse. None of the gold. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. I'll tell you what. We have a good. They finally got uh, Osama bin Laden. Did you guys see um, the video of Osama uh, watching TV? Anyone seen that? It was like online for a long time. But they took all the, uh, they took all the sound out, and they, they said it was like classified. But actually, just. Last Thursday, they declassified the audio on the video, and I brought it here tonight. You guys want to see it? Uh, Josh, do we have that uh, Osama bin Laden footage? <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. Hey, get in there. I taped Glee. <laughs> oh, man, I love that show. You and me. Feel like I'm living a teenage dream. Yeah. The 
ich dann auch bei Tape gelesen gerade. Input DDR. Yes, okay, it's on Channel 3. Yes, it's right. A stupid Time Warner Cable. Alright, let's see. No, box input, no. Uh, I'm not seeing it. No, don't tell me it didn't tape it. Uh. You guys, enjoy Kurt Ziffel. You guys have been fantastic. God bless. Good night. <laughs> One more time, Matt Knudsen, everybody. Yeah. Matt Knudsen. Uh, are we having a good time? Yeah. Uh, my mother in New Jersey texted me, and she uh, said, the quote, she's watching live now. You guys wonder what she said to me? Does anyone care? <laughs> Thanks. It would have been better if I had this open. She wrote, uh, so my mom wrote me. I'm 38 years old. Break a leg. So great seeing you live. Wish I could be there. Stop using the F word. Love, mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, fuck that, Mom. <laughs> nah, thanks, Mom. I love you, too. Um, are you guys ready for the last guy? Yeah! Are you ready for this last guy? Let me tell you something. I perform with this guy all over town. He's amazing, and you're, he, you guys are the reason he's here. Are we ready for the, your headliner? Very funny. Kurt Zipfeld, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi there. Just checking in. I invited every single one of you. Hi. Who, who's sitting there? Somebody is not there enough. They leave. What's up, dudes? You guys came all the way to Hollywood. Maybe some of you live here, but awesome. I came. Thank you all for coming. So glad to see you. Everybody looks great. You guys, I have a theory that I've been working on. Uh, it's a new theory I've been working on. Here it is. <laughs> what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> Guys, I have a theory that I've been working on. It's a new theory. Um. <laughs> uh, I, I have a theory that I've been working on. And here it is. Uh, the internet... Uh, the internet is not helping. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's not helping. Uh, I feel like we give a lot of credit to the internet for being amazing. Everyone's like, hey, hey. Have you used the internet today? <laughs> have, you, have you used the internet? It's, it's the best. I love it. And uh, the internet is mostly a bunch of people talking shit. I think that's mainly what the internet is. But we act like it's such a special thing, you know, like we're so lucky to be, have it be a part of our lives. Here's something the internet doesn't do. Ladies. The internet does not make you smarter than a doctor, okay? <laughs> Okay, doctors are smart. They don't know everything. But here's what they do know. More than you and your phone combined. <laughs> but I read, I read on my, on my phone, and then, and then, and then. I feel like we are gonna look back on this time in life, in our lives, at this period of time in history, and we're gonna feel like maybe we overdid it with the fucking phones. <laughs> You know, I think like we're just gonna be like, hey, we sort of lost our shit there for a little while. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I apologize. Just, just because you have a hot brick in your pocket doesn't mean that you have to pull it out and play with it all the fucking time, okay? Just be, I have a hot brick, and I, 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 I pull it out and I like, tickle my little brick, little brick tickler out there. <laughs> 
you know? But anywhere, all the goddamn time. It's just not, it's not the way it's supposed to be. We used to have manners, you know? We had manners, but then we got our little phones, we're like, I'm not getting my phone. My phone. It's, uh, it's a disease, is what it is. Sorry, I had to carry this all the way over here. But uh, I wrote a song about it, actually. We're going to start with a song tonight. everything you've got to be a good parent. It really does. It takes everything you have. All your money and everything. <laughs> everything you got. But I'm serious. But being a dad, okay, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but being a dad is hard, especially in the modern dad pussy era. Okay? <laughs> when dads do half of the, you know, half of the hands-on parenting work we do. So unlike my dad, I change diapers, I get baths, clean puke, you know, I make dinner, and, uh, 
I do all that stuff. And the, the benefit to all this is that we have wives who are more relaxed, less stressed, <laughs> able to pursue goals outside the home. <laughs> and to put it another way, there is no benefit. <laughs> There's no benefit, and I want to go back to the 70s. <laughs> I want to go back to the way it was back in the good old days, back in the day. With a nine-year-old, it's a little bit different. I go to a lot of soccer games now. I go to a lot of soccer games. I think a lot of people think, a lot of people think that soccer is a sport. <laughs> I think a ton of people think that. Uh, soccer is not a sport, really. Soccer is a tool, okay? Soccer is a punishment tool designed to destroy a perfectly good Saturday. <laughs> That's true. I wake up on Saturday, I'll turn to my wife and be like, bam! Saturday? I'm going surfing? And she's like, no. You are going to Thousand Oaks. <laughs> See? And you're going to bake under the hot sun in a folding chair. That's what you're going to do. I'm like, right. Yeah. Uh, we go to soccer tournaments, too. Soccer tournament is like a soccer game, except it destroys Sunday as well. Yeah. Whole weekend shot. Whole weekend shot. Um, uh, when, you, when you're a parent, you do a lot of shopping. You just, you just, you just buy. You just buy stuff. You buy it all the time. So I go to stores a lot. I go to stores all the time. I feel like I spend my, half my life in stores now. I've never really been a big fan of shopping, you know, but I've, I'm getting more used to it. But when I go to grocery stores, that's a little bit different. I like to shop Trader Joe's, okay? I like to buy my groceries at Trader Joe's. You know why? Because it's cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, going to Trader Joe's is cool. I don't want to be a nerd going to Albertsons, Ralph's. I want to be one of the cool kids. Like shopping at Trader Joe's is hard, okay? But it's the kind of hard that white people love, okay? <laughs> It's complex. There's some ritual to it. You got to be sort of in on, you know, in on the joke, in the knowledge of know where it is. It's hard to park. It's hard to get in. It's hard to walk around. You know, it's like it's narrow, and everyone's giving you that look, like, Are you belong. You know? <laughs> you ask somebody to ask you to leave, and you're like, no, no I, I'm shopping here. I'm here. And you're like, you know, be cool. Be cool. Don't tell anybody else. We get all we need here. You know, they don't have all the things that other stores have, like the conveniences, like a conveyor belt. Okay, that's an easy thing to get. Church is like, no, we don't have those. We have a wooden ramp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just bring your stuff up to the ramp, you know, and then we'll scan it across there. And by the way, customer, you get your ass around the back and bag your own fucking groceries. Because uh, I'm not doing that. Like, no, no, no problem, man. I'm totally happy to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. So, you know, and I, li I like Trader Joe's. I mean, they have, they have good stuff, Trader Joe's. They have good stuff. But I can't, uh, I can't buy, it can't be everything. I can't, you know, I can't get it all at Trader Joe's. Like, I go, so when I say I shop at Trader Joe's, what I mean is I shop, go to Trader Joe's, buy as much stuff as I possibly can, but then I go to Ralph's, okay? <laughs> and then I buy garbage bags, Doritos, and normal toothpaste. Because <laughs> you can't, survive on what you find at Trader Joe's alone. It's just not, it's not possible. My, my wife came back with some, some toothpaste that she bought at Trader Joe's. She bought me some Tom's of Maine um, organic toothpaste. It was plantain flavored toothpaste. Plantain. I mean, even the toothpaste is like pretentious. I mean, come on, it's a fucking banana. It's a small banana. Right? So anyway, it's awful. It tastes like hay. It's like rinsing your mouth out with hay at the end of the day. You know, I don't know if you guys know anything about Thompson, but Thompson made is like this company. It's just, they make a tiny profit making organic healthcare products and hygiene products that don't do any shit. <laughs> you literally don't do anything. I bought some Thompson made unscented organic deodorant at Trader Joe's. Unscented organic deodorant. Okay, what? Well, that's not true. It wasn't unscented. It smelled exactly like B.O. <laughs> okay. 
because it was only nine bucks, you know, and I'm like, it's, like, it's, it's worth a shot. How can you hand me some deodorant that's organic, unscented? You fucking mind? People pay for this stuff? You can't battle the forces of organic stink in my armpits with other organic stuff. That just that's like throwing fuel on the fire. Like a little little odor, you know, odor accentuator. There you go. Needed some more some more hemp molecules down in my armpits. Just, you, you need synthetic chemicals to fight what's going on in there. You can't just win by giving that shit. <sighs> but yes, I buy a lot of stuff. I buy a lot of stuff. I buy a trade of yours. Trade of yours is, is, is a Southern California. Wait, wait. See, I don't know where it came from. Seems like it's a Southern California thing, but then I think I think just about everything is a Southern California thing these days. I'm like, yeah, we invented that. I say we because I'm like, yeah, I live here. Um, you know, this is me. I, I've never done any of this material before. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Right now. <laughs> That's all. Right. I'm gonna get my guitar. You guys like the Eagles? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I do too. I do too. I like the Eagles. Eagles were kind of a Southern California, you know, thing. They were. They uh, they weren't from here, did they? They kind of came up here. Look at me. That's the, this is not the right one. Sorry. Jason, you're the best. It's also not the right one, but it's okay. I'm gonna use Jason's. Okay, here we go. <coughs> this song is called Southern California. Mm -hmm. I 
can't remember 1982. I'm pretty sure I got married to Stephen Nicks. I left Southern California. Sweet guitars and free love on the Santa Fe to get new age just my STD It's all right. It's all right. I like that. I like that slowness. I like take it down a notch. Um, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Um, okay. One of the uh, one of the biggest complaints that I think that uh, women have about men is that m uh, men don't listen. Men don't listen. I hear that a, a lot from my friends and my wife. I think. <laughs> um, I think that's what she's saying. Men don't listen, men don't listen, men don't listen, men don't listen, men don't listen. And, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, but the uh, human ear is a very complex organ, okay? Very complex, a lot of different parts all working together, okay? But inside the ear, down in there somewhere, there's like these hairs, right? Tiny little ear hair. That, what they do is they vibrate, you know, and they, and they convert sound waves into electrical signals that the brain interprets as sound, okay? I read this on my phone. <laughs> okay? So anyway, these ear, these little hairs vibrate. Brain understands that they're listening to sound. Okay, great. Now, what happens in the ear is if you expose those hairs to a repeated sound, like a, at a certain frequency, <laughs> sort of like a, like a condescending, you know, <laughs> sort of complaining, bitchy, uh, relentless sound, <laughs> then what happens, unfortunately, it like scorches like a dead, a dead spot in the ear, right? A dead zone in the ear, so the, the hairs can't uh, you know, transmit any brain signals at that uh, frequency. This is science, okay, this is, this is, what, this is what happens. So it's not, that, it's not that we're not listening, it's that we, we can't hear you because you destroyed our ears. <laughs> you destroyed our ears and we, you know, I, I can't listen. Now, the good news is, is that uh, this, this, is not a, this is not a permanent condition. You can actually repair, you can repair the ears. They can come back. The human body has a ma tremendous capacity for self-regeneration. So for instance, at that same frequency, if, if things were said like, look, for instance, this would be something you could say to help bring it back. It would be like, hey, let's, let's order a pizza and then get you a, a blowjob. Like, that's the kind of thing will bring those ears back like that. Back like that. Listening, helping, lifting, all the things that men do, all the things we do. Does anybody else, I, I do, and I'm wondering, does anyone else uh, here live with a domestic detective? Anybody else live with a domestic detective? You know you live with a domestic detective when you find yourself sort of defending your actions outside the house and sort of having to justify your behavior outside the home. Like, okay, for instance, this is, this is just one thing that happens sometimes. Like, we have kids, I go out, I have to buy, you know, milk and stuff. My wife sent me out to get milk, so I'll come back with milk. I've got the milk, there it is, I walk in the thing. My wife will be like, did you use the coupon that I gave you <laughs> for a dollar off that milk? Did you use that? And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, I used it. She's like, no, you didn't, because it's right here. <laughs> it's right here in the coupon basket. This is where I left it for you. I can go back and see. It. Now you're a liar. <laughs> or she'll come into the kitchen, and she'll come into the kitchen, and she'll be like, did you just give my daughter tap water? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> 
I wouldn't do that. She's like, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I can smell chlorine on her breath. <laughs> don't do that. I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, white babies are allergic to tap water. Yeah, you can't give, that <laughs> can't give no white baby tap water. Come on, Jesus. I learned that the hard way. But the thing that she usually, that she, she'll probably, she, she likes to do the most is like, she'll, the detective, she just made lieutenant, by the way. It was a very, it was a big deal. We had a party. She'll come and find me. She'll come and find, she'll walk past the bathroom upstairs and she'll come and find me where I'm in the basement hiding. Really, that's what I do, I like to hide in the basement. She'll come and find me and she'll just be like, she'll come right up, she'll be like, what did you eat? What, what, what did you eat? What is wrong with your body? My God, you, you're disgusting. You're sick. <laughs> you know, like, does anybody else get in trouble for, for pooping? <laughs> like, anybody else get busted for pooping? You know, and I'm not, I don't mean like in the dryer or under the bed. I mean like in the bathroom with the spray and the flush and the fan and the brush and everything. All, everything I can do to cover it up and just hi I'll hide my stink. Demanding to know what I ate. What? What is that? What did you do? You know, and if there's nothing wrong with you, I mean, I'm like, I don't know. I don't. What did I do? I didn't do anything. I, I, what, did, what did you eat? Sometimes I'll lie too. I'll be like, I, babe, I had like a you know fennel, shaved fennel and, and, and arugula with olive oil and lemon. She's like, no, you didn't. You had Wendy's. You had Wendy's, and I know it. Like, How do you know I had Wendy's? She's like, because of the receipts right here. I found this in your pocket. You were disgusting. You know, I'm like, babe, you know what? If I don't do that, I'll die. She's like, I'd rather you be dead than do that in my house. That's some disturbing shit. That happens, that's true. So, I you know. I mean, we don't have that much sex anymore, frankly. It's just, you know, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. We have kids, you know, it's hard. You know, it's, it's all true. Everything you hear is true. It's, all, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Part of the reason I think we don't have that, we don't have that much sex anymore is that we have very different night, night rituals, okay? Part of it is that you have kids and that's hard, but part of it is that we have very different night rituals. Night ritual is, you know, what you do before you go to bed, right? I mean, that's, it's, for instance, my night ritual is very simple, all right? It's 45 seconds for me to wake up off the couch Brush all the corn chips off my body. <laughs> Put my cigarette out. Walk upstairs, take all my clothes off, and get in bed. That's it, okay? That's my night. It's me getting in bed. There's an optional toothbrushing in there. Maybe I will brush my teeth. Frankly, I probably will not brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's is extremely different. My wife's is, four, it is about 30 minutes. It's extremely complex, multi-part, chronological, okay? You, there's a very strict order to the way this is done. Starting with a full wardrobe change. I'm talking about a complete removal of all clothing down to the nudity, redressing of the self. Have to put on fresh, brand new, clean clothes, go to bed. And then there's a moisturization lubrication ritual, which is also extremely complex, multi-part chronological, okay? Because it's not just one thing, okay? It's not just, if it were one cream, that would be, I could understand that. A guy could wrap his mind around, like, you just gotta put on cream. Okay, I get it. That's one thing. Yeah, you gotta put that on there. It's not one thing, though. It's a, it's a, it's a range of creams. Starting at high volume, low cost. That's Jergens Pump Lotion. Okay? Jergens Pump Lotion, gotta start with that. <laughs> Double pump. Jergens Pump Lotion can be applied to most of the body, okay? You just start down here, you get down the legs, the knees, arms, the thighs, the boobs. The belly, the body, the elbows, the skin, scaly, skin, dry, itchy, dry and itchy. You can do that. You can do almost, you can do almost like 90% of the body until you get to the neck, okay? Once you get to the neck, you cannot put Jergens pump lotion above or on a woman's neck, okay? You know why? I don't know why, but you can't do that shit. Nobody does that. It's like you, there's a hard stop at the neck, all right? The chest, that's fine, hard stop neck. Because once you get to the neck, you gotta change cream. It's gotta be smaller and more expensive. It's probably French, it has an apostrophe in the title. Smaller, smaller. Constantly itching our way up the body. Once you head up the neck, okay, great. Neck cream, bam, chin cream. 
And we got to constantly changing smaller. Because the higher up the body you go, you're always approaching the eye. <laughs> the eye. The tremendous, expensive eye. The orb of all life. This must be surrounded by the most expensive cream in the arsenal. To literally, my wife is getting to the point where she like she has this tiny sterling silver jar. You know, this little delicate jar. You unscrew the magical jar, and it contains a, a cream made by Polish skin fairies. Okay, it's like this the rarest of beeswax. Okay, and you can't what you what you don't do what you don't do is just reach your stupid finger in there and just smear it all over your eyes. You don't even touch it or your skin with it. My wife, she opens it up, she says a little prayer, and then you take out the special, he pulls out a ladybug's wing, a single ladybug's wing that she has, and just, just like, literally takes it and just like, scrapes up the finest, a bit of dust, a little, she just gasses out a little bit of this stuff and then just drift your face into it. You know, you don't, you would never, you don't paint it on yourself like an idiot. You just, you bring yourself to it. And it settles delicately on the eye. <laughs> so, so finally she's done, okay? I've been asleep for 29 minutes and 15 seconds. <sighs> she is completely lubricated into her pajamas. They're stuck to her with pajama adhesive, like just like this. She comes to get in the bed, she gets in the bed. I wake up and immediately try to fuck her, like that. I'm just like, I wake up. And it's like, a, it's like a, like, like just an instinct, we're just like, Wah! And I grab her, but I can't get a hold of her. She's too slippery. She's sliding all over the place. It's like trying to wrestle somebody in olive oil. You're just like, <laughs> till finally I just give up. I give up and fall asleep. <laughs> I give up. She knows. She's smart. Okay, that's that's what experience is. That is how you make lieutenant. <laughs> Not. Not by being an idiot. Not by going to, to bed with your husband at the same time like an idiot. Just setting yourself. It's like a freaking booby trap in there. It's like a punji stick Viet Cong trap. Once you get in a bed with a sleep, an awake, aware husband, he's you're just like, oh, that's it, baby. You're going down. She's like, I, I'm going to go fuck around for a half an hour <laughs> while you get sleepy. Like, I'll be waiting. No, you won't. That's how you do it. You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart about your shit. God, it's so true. It's so awful. And it's so sad and terrible. Just as true as the day is long. Um, <coughs> I don't even know what to. Mm. We finished. All right, then you can go home. Thank you, guys. By the way, let me just thank you personally all for coming tonight. I know that uh, I know that it, it was. Uh, I mean, the traffic was just murder uh, today. My sisters drove up here from San Diego to see the show. You guys all came from the beach. Thank you. Uh, I started. Uh, I dated my. My wife before we got married, <laughs> and when we uh, when I when I you know started dating her, I, I was you know I was really ex you know I was excited. I was like, oh, you're really pretty, and uh, so I you know started writing a few more comedy songs and this and that. I think songwriting in general, like, if you say to a girl, hey, I, I wrote a song about you, they're like, cool. That's awesome. If you're like, hey, I wrote a comedy song about you, they're like. What the hell's wrong with you? So I have, I, I, but let me just say this. My wife is hot, okay? She's gorgeous. And, uh, and uh, so when I told her, you know, I wrote this song, and she was like, 
Thanks. Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? So anyway, I, uh, I, you know, I told her, I'm like, babe, this is wrong. I wrote this song for you. It's called Butterface. I mean, it's not for you. It's, it's you inspired me to write it. I, I thought that was the gift that I was giving her. You know, this is the, the return of inspiration. Like, you, you inspired me. She's like, you're a dick. So anyway, here's a, here's a little song called Butterface. I got a girl and I love her true Long legs that turn my gray skies blue She's got a body that could model underwear She's built for speed and the boys all stare Her love puts me into outer space I don't mind that my girl's got a butterface Well, little butterface, butterface, yes indeed Little butterface, you're the one for me. She got skin so soft it makes me high. I don't mind that lazy eye. I'll give you everything I possess for your fucked up teeth and your beautiful breast. Give me the book too. Hair lip, you're more misshapen head. She's gonna be a category five typhoon in bed. You can keep your pretty girls with their red moon eyes. I'll take your four in the face if she's a ten of thighs. Yeah. I wish everybody had a butt to face. No beautiful people running that race. Be a lot more fucking and a lot less warm. You can find yourself a happy place when you go out there and bag yourself a butterfly. I'm in a butterface, butterface. You're mine, all mine. I love the way you look, honey. From behind you, you have butterfly. Glad I followed you home. Thank you all. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. You guys are awesome. Everybody, one more time, Kirk Zipfell. Stands up. We're here every other Friday. Please tell your friends if you had a good time. Watch us on the